In this video lesson, we're going to look at headers and footers. In a document that is on the screen, the information is usually easy to access. You can scroll down from page to page. You can't get the pages in the wrong order, for example. You can also use the status bar to know what page you are on and how many pages there are. So we're currently on page one out of three pages. Headers and footers come into their own when you print out a document. It puts some identifying information in this top margin area of the document above the main text. That's called the header. You can also put information in this bottom of the page margin area, and that's called a footer. To all intents and purposes, whatever you put in the header area or footer area will repeat itself on every page in the document. What we actually need to do is View headers and footers. So even though we want to insert a footer or a header, you've got to select the view menu and drop down to header and footer. Once we click on there, two things happen. The main text in the document is greyed out and we have this dotted area in the header. The word header appears there, so we know we're working with the header. The second thing that happens is we get the header and footer toolbar. Again, that might be locked somewhere on your screen. If it is, it's fine for you to work there. I like mine floating around. So, header and footer, lots of things we could do. The absolute basics are we can type in this area. So, I'm going to try that. I'm going to put dogs and foxes by Ron Taylor. Once you've finished doing your typing, and you can do all the normal formatting, for example, you can make it centered, change the formatting if you wish to. Once you've finished typing into the header area, then we need to close the header and footer system. So we simply click the close button, the toolbar disappears. We can see we've now got header information, which I can't select. I can't click and drag and select that. It's embedded into the document, so I can click and drag here to select text. I can't click and drag to select that. It's the header. When I scroll down, Dogs and Foxes by Ron Taylor will appear at the top of every single page in the document. Dogs and Foxes in, by Ron Taylor, down to the third page. So that's inserting a header, and we can modify and change that just by repeating that process. So we can select view, header and footer, and make those amendments in the header area. Now I'll keep talking about headers and footers. We can do exactly the same at the bottom of the page as we can at the top of the page. We do it in exactly the same way, except on this toolbar, we click this button, switch between header and footer. If I click it once, we jump down to the bottom of the screen, footer and I can type in there and then I can click this button again and it switches back to the header and I can type in there and I can flick between them just by clicking that button footer header footer header once you've finished click close we can see you've got foxes and dogs as the header scroll down we've got Ron Taylor as the footer and the header of the next page, Foxes and Dogs, and scroll down, and it will be at the footer is Ron Taylor again. So that's View, Header and Footer. We've talked about switching between the header and footer, and the fact that we can type in there and do all the formatting. To get rid of the information, simply delete it, switch to the footer, and delete, switch back to the header. Those headers and footers are gone now. There's more we can do with this, though. We can use fields in the headers and footers. Fields are used in the rest of these buttons. First of all, we've got some auto text fields. If I click on this little, move this up a bit, click on the drop down, and these are the fields we can use. We can put in the author, the page number, and the date. Or we can put in the word confidential the page number and the date, or who created the document, or what date it was created on, file name, file name and path, 
we can put all this information in the header or footer simply by clicking. Let's put confidential page number and date. You can see it's put that information in, confidential, page number one, and today's date. If I click close now, you can see it's there in the header. When I scroll down, top of the next page, you've got confidential, page two and the date because these are fields that are automatically updated confidential page three and the date so it means you don't have to type in page numbers anymore you can put them in the header and footer view header and footer and use the auto text to use fields so you don't have to type in page numbers it's going to delete that so that's the auto text. Quick and easy way of doing that. But we can also use these other icons here for a little bit more control. And if we just hover over them, this first one is insert page number. If I just click there once, you see it puts a little number in the box there. That's the page number. I'm just going to put a couple of spaces. We can also put the number of pages three pages so page one we're on but there are three pages all together space for a couple we can also format the page numbers so instead of having one two three we could have abc or we could have roman numerals let's try abc and then okay it's now page a Selecting format page numbers, choose the style that you want, and then OK. It's obviously just changing the page number there because you can't say there are C pages, there are three pages, but we're on page A out of three. So, what else can we do? So, that was inserting page numbers and the pa number of pages, formatting those numbers. We can put in the current date. We can put in the current time. And the rest of those icons are for another time. So let's switch to the footer and build this up manually. We can do all kinds of things. We can put um, page number and then we can put the page number of and then we can put the number of pages. So that's going to say page number A of three. But I want to format that to be numbers again. So I'm going to use the next icon, format page number, change it back to traditional numbers, and OK. So we're going to say page number one of three. Um, put some more writing in today's date is. And let's use the date icon to insert today's date. And the current time is if I could type insert time now they are automatically updated they are filled so when I open this document tomorrow that would say the 12th of February at whatever time I create I open the document tomorrow again if I add more text to this document then that would say page number one of four or one of five these gray areas are fields they will be automatically updated one word though, you might not see that grey area in your document. It depends how your computer is set up. I'll show you that briefly in a second. So we click close. And there in our footer, we've got page number one of three. Today's date is, the current time is with my spelling mistake. Scroll down to the second page, page number two of three. Today's date is, current time is. So that's headers and footers. We do it using view, header and footer, and then we can type into these boxes, or we can use these icons to insert fields. And we can switch between header and footer using this icon. Very briefly, I like my fields to show up in grey. Um, if you like that idea, you can get that by accessing the tools menu, dropping down to options, and it's this field shading area here on the view tab this field shading area is by default 
when selected. That means when you click on the field, it will turn grey. I like it grey all the time, so I change that to always. And then OK. And then at a glance in my document, I can see which bits are automatically updating. So that's headers and footers.